So let's talk about some of the clinical manifestations that we see with Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is a disorder of memory impairment. This is the most common early symptom of Alzheimer's disease. It's described by patients as an anterograde long-term episodic amnesia. Patients can't remember what you just told them. They know who they are, they have all their long-term memories, but those new memories that they want to lay down are uh, difficult uh, to do. There, it is insidious in its onset with slow, gradual progression. It's a degenerative disease, so we see slow, gradual progression over time. Rapid onset or episodes of more severe memory loss should prompt and, and warn evaluation for alternative etiologies. In the earliest stages of presentation, episodic memory is affected. That's the memory of events occurring at a time or a place, things that we've done recently. We can also see impairment in executive function and judgment. There can be associated behavioral changes, and this is more common in advanced stages of the disease. We do look for and can see impairment in other cognitive domains, again, apraxia, agnosia, aphasia, in addition to that early amnesia. And these may develop and progress insidiously as well. Patients may develop motor functional impairment. We think about apraxia or the planning of movements. This, is, uh, this appears as difficulty performing purposeful movements, showing how you would brush your teeth or cut a slice of bread or demonstration of how you would do a motor task. We can see behavioral and psychological symptoms, sleep disturbances, apathy or just lack of interest motivation in doing something, social disengagement um, or irritability, particularly in advanced stages of the disease. How do we diagnose Alzheimer's disease? Well, it's a clinical diagnosis. We use our history and physical examination, one, to support a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and to exclude alternative pathology. A detailed neurologic exam is important. Patients with focal neurologic deficits or symptoms and signs that don't fit with typical Alzheimer's disease pathology should warrant evaluation of an alternative diagnosis. And then we can use bedside tests to support a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and guide us in terms of the severity. And that includes the Mini Mental Status Exam as well as the Montreal Cognitive Assessment Exam. The Mini Mental Status Exam is a, is a long-standing used exam, but the MOCA is really more sensitive and specific for stages of Alzheimer's disease. And you'll see that move used more often in the clinic and with clinical vignettes. So let's talk through both the MMSE, Mini Mental Status Exam, and the MOCA, Montreal Cognitive um, Assessment. The MMSE is a test of cognitive function among those in the elderly or other ages. It includes, includes tests of orientation, attention, memory, language, and visuospatial skills. And so you can see this has been oriented to detect patients who may have Alzheimer's dementia where these um, domains are primarily affected. Now let's look more specifically at the MMSE. We test each of those important domains of cognitive function. And the first is orientation. We look at year, month, date, as well as location, and this is scored out of a total of five. Next is registration, asking the patient to remember three items and immediately report them back. Patients with advanced dementia can still register items and it's important to evaluate the registration before we test recall. We look at attention and, con and concentration with serial sevens or spelling word ba world backwards or reciting the months of the year forwards and backwards. We're looking to see whether the patient is able to remain on task to maintain their attention and concentration throughout the entirety of that task. Fourth is recall. Those three words that we ask the patient to remember, can they remember them at five minutes? We're looking for short-term memory dysfunction. And then lastly, we look at, uh, at naming and language, asking the patient to name and repeat, um, as well as follow commands, uh, looking for issues with aphasia in this category and domain. And then the last domain is visuospatial tasks. And you can see the inter, um, interleaving uh, boxes, pentagons that are drawn here, and the patient is asked to reproduce this image. In terms of scoring, we score the MMSE on a scale of 30. 20 to, 24 to 30 indicate no cognitive impairment. 18 to 23 indicates mild cognitive impairment. And uh, score less than 17, more severe cognitive impairment. 
Now let's turn to the MOCA, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, which is really the workhorse in terms of bedside testing of cognitive function. This is a rapid screening instrument for mild cognitive impairments as well as advanced dementia. It consists of 30 questions, takes about 10 to 12 minutes to complete, and can be easily incorporated into a clinic visit or a, um, an inpatient hospital examination. What are the domains tested on the MOCA? The first is visuospatial and executive function, and a number of tasks evaluate this domain. We look at naming, memory function, both immediate and long-term uh, recall. Attention is tested, attention and concentration. You can see here with serial sevens as well as repeated word lists. And language function. We also look at abstraction, the ability to look at abstract thoughts, delayed recall, um, uh, remembering things at five minutes, and orientation. Like the MMSE, this is scored out of a total of 30. Scores between 26 and 30 are normal, and patients are considered to have normal cognitive abilities. A score of 19 to 25 indicates mild cognitive impairment, and scores less than 21 indicate more advanced, mild, moderate, or severe dementia. In addition to bedside examination, imaging can be used in the evaluation of these patients. It's not required for a diagnosis, but can be supportive in uh, selected cases. In terms of structural imaging like MRI, we really don't see early findings, uh, but we can see late findings of an advanced dementia, including generalized or focal atrophy, white matter lesions, reduced hippocampal volume, or medial temporal lobe atrophy. By the time we're seeing these changes, there's no ability to intervene for the patient, and this really is not uh, incorporated into the early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease or other dementias. Increasingly, we see the use of beta amyloid, PET imaging, as well as other more advanced nuclear imaging techniques. This uses a tracer that binds to beta amyloid and lights up areas of deposition of beta amyloid. We use a qualitative assessment of beta amyloid plaque density, and you can see that here in the images. The red areas are areas of beta amyloid deposition, and we can see those in the frontal lobes as well as the, um, the posterior temporal and parietal lobes, areas that we would typically see beta amyloid deposition in Alzheimer's dementia. And this can be suggestive of early signs and early pathology um, in patients who have both mild cognitive impairment and more advanced cognitive dysfunction.